Okay, it's always so weird because these videos are going to be uploaded like at different times, but uh, we're back here and we are going to summon for um, for Bellion. Uh, I probably should have had some like Landy review in the in the last video, but like now that I'm thinking about it, like two seconds later. Uh, but I think I think that'll be fine. I mean, you should already kind of know what Landy how, how strong Landy is. Like if you don't have her, you she's probably dunked on you so much that you should know. Uh, and if if that's not the case either, then just go watch like any other person's video and like listen to them uh, tell you why she's so powerful. Uh, but so Bellion, I guess we can talk about Bellion because no one has Bellion, and and like my thoughts on Bellion are going to be just as bad as anyone else's thoughts on Bellion. So I think we can just get like a big old thing and try to figure out how she's going to turn out. Uh, I think she's pretty good. I think I mean obviously like her main draw right now is not even like her other moves, and I don't know I have I don't know why I have ninety nine. That's kind of weird. I don't remember summoning uh, even once. Um, but, yeah, so, I forgot what that, what I was saying, but anyway, her, her main thing is just her, her S, her S2, um, you can get souls, right, so the, the Taga Hells, I, I mentioned in one of my videos that, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't work on Taga Hells, but then, like, I think I, like, part of that, I, I misinterpreted what people were saying, I think, so I thought people were saying that it doesn't affect Taga Hells, but people were actually just confirming that it does, in fact, affect Taga Hells, so, um, this is the rain region people are gonna buy uh, gonna use her just to like or basically yeah, people are gonna buy her uh, They're just gonna use her because of this right? Um, people are getting tired of seeing like Taga Hells on like every mage and and I would like to stress the point that um, Every mage is running Taga Hells right now because there aren't a whole lot of good um, Other artifacts now. There's a lot of great mage artifacts, right? So let's go over here and double and show you Let's go look at the mage artifacts real quick just as a why to show you why Taga Hells is so strong. Okay, so Abyssal Crown gives you a 24% chance to stun, but who cares because the only people who make good use of this need a strip, right? And you'd rather have them do something else. So like take uh, like Dizzy's pretty good with this, but she needs a stripper because now there's already so much effect resistance that who cares? Um uh Silver Blade Araminta is the same way. DJ Basar can use this, but he'd rather just have the Taga Hells for 100% um soul burn right like there's just so many people where like their soul burn kind of who cares this is 50 percent chance to like uh decrease school sk skill cooldown at max so it's like who cares about that that's kind of worthless time matter has always been worthless unless you need it for a one-shot comp i'm not sure what you how it works but if you have any of these don't throw them away you might need it for a one-shot comp just just know that outside of that it's basically useless um Chatty is good for making people tanky, but who cares? Because you could just soul burn, and then if they don't survive that long, like like S10A, she doesn't survive that many AOEs. Just don't take that many AOEs. Bring the soul burn and take out more units before you know problems happen. Now that's kind of a simple thing to say, but that's important to realize in RTA. That's where the most um, importance lies: is taking them out as soon as possible. Be more aggressive, uh, and something like this just isn't like okay, she'll survive, but who cares? Like Necro and Undine, like there aren't a whole lot of like. There's just not a whole lot of use for this because the only like Dizzy could use this, but who cares? Because you know, you could just run a strip. You can run her with Ayelas because it strips better. Um, and no, the AOE mages aren't very good right now for the same reasons that like Dizzy's not very good right now. It's like you can't bring stuff into Violet or just like AOE in general, right? You have to bring very specific, very useful AOE. Uh, Spirit's Breath is basically best in slot for Angel of Light, but even then, some people are bringing Tagahels because it's more useful just to have. Not only her be um, do her S three, but then like someone else after her can use soul burns on top of that, right? Like, um, yeah, just so people are running. It's fifty fifty, and, and people are probably running Taga Hells because they don't have like a max one of this, and that's kind of what you want. Um, Dingusorb is only good on some mages. Basically, it's only good on Vivian because or Vivian or um, ML Lulica, but ML Lulica is not an RTA very much either because she dies too quickly and she doesn't often do her job. Um, she's only there to counter Arby, but like. Um, what's it, what's his name? ML Haste kind of does that better. Now she does other things, right? She she can counter just general revivability, but like she has to really hit hard with her S three. And there's so much anti counter, anti cleave stuff that you know she boosts people up, and then she just kind of gets sweeped by you know anti cleave. Um, Bloody Rose has always been useless, and they buffed it to give a fifty percent chance, not even a hundred percent chance, to add vampiric touch. So basically, it's more useless than it would even could have ever been. Uh, Black Mage Hand, like I said, there's not a whole lot of um, there's not a whole lot of high damage dealing um, mages, but they'd rather use something else like a Soul Burn. Um, for 24% crit damage, it's just not it doesn't do anything. Like I'd rather have an attack buff than the crit damage, right? 
like this. Obviously, this is the same as the other one. Only give, you get fourteen percent more damage and a twenty percent reduction. Like, the, it's just not it's not worth any of it. Like, why why get a chance to reduce your cooldowns when you can just take an extra turn, like a lot of mages do have, right? So, like, here let's take a look at some other like. So that this is obviously for what's her name. This doesn't do anything. It's a waste of everyone's time. Um, this does almost nothing. Uh, this literally does nothing until they die, which is not a good plan to have. This is only for PVE. And, like, there you go. We just went through all the five stars, and none of these are useful. None of these. No one is running this. Go, go look at everyone's videos. See how many people are running these. This is being run on AOL. This is being run sometimes, just to be annoying. Uh, on, on Politis, specifically. Um, this is only being run on specific units, and it's not because it's a good general artifact. It's just that it's just good on those units. Uh, but none of this stuff is useful. All this is just a waste of time. Except for, obviously, this is really good on, what's her name? On Mercedes. Then we look down here, and no one's using this because this is useless. Uh, that's PVE. Uh, this is basically useless because for one, you know, not a whole lot of you don't need a whole lot of damage. And you know, if you're taking enough turns to get max stacks, then you should have already won or something. I don't know. I just, it's not really worth stacking up all that attack. Uh, Sierra Red is kind of useful. It's kind of anno It's just annoying. It's not wholly useful. It's just kind of annoying on um, Fairy Tail Tenebrio because adding more chances to get random debuffs is always irritating. Um, no one cares about the damage on this. Like, there's no unit that uses this because there's no unit that like does a lot of debuffs and is supposed to do a lot of damage. Obviously, yeah, Spectre Tenebria does this, but like, why get 30% on one damage when I can just soul burn and get two hits off, right? So that's kind of why. Again, like this, this there's there's no niche for these. Like, no one cares about these things. Some people are using this. I use this on Dizzy and I use this on um, Zerato because stripping into debuffing them is good. Um, and I've already talked a lot of times about Dizzy why having her having a strip on Dizzy is really good So all that's left is Tiger Hells like there's really nothing else especially because Tiger Hells gives you such an advantage um, In terms of soul burn because soul burning on turn one like I'm not gonna say it like breaks the game or nothing But it's kind of like the, the, the idea of soul burn is the trade-off, right? So it's like you get a really powerful soul burn effect But you have to kind of wait to stack up souls and then if you bring Tiger Hells you kind of just remove that um, So at least for me right when I'm when I'm building mages like I, I'm sitting there. I'm like what do I put on this mage? None of these artifacts are very useful. They're not really worth anything. Um, that's why I don't use a lot of mages, right? I don't really use very many mages. Because for one, they don't have very good artifacts. And for two, they just aren't really that useful right now. Um, so the only other option is, okay, well, let's give a mage an artifact. And either the mage can use the soul burn in the case of Spectre Tenebria, or or in the case of um, Carrot, right? Uh, or we, yeah, again, the Carousel example of like just take another turn. Like, who cares about Etika's scepter proccing? When I can just take another turn, she does an, an S1 and then she comes back to her S3 again, right? So it's like, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like there's really not a whole lot. Like her, especially like with take fairy tale, take uh, take take carrot as another example. Like she's not going to be very good with um that mask or whatever, the one that gives you thirty percent on debuffs because her her abilities work on burns, which penetrate defense because they're just attack based burns. Uh, so it's important to realize like why those things are the way they are. Uh, so we're gonna do ten pulls just because uh, we've already kind of wasted all that time explaining why Taga Hells is as good as it is. Um, can I sip through this? Okay. So like I said, yeah, Bellion is strong because there's really not enough good artifacts out there to make um, Taga Hells not useful, right? And we got basically nothing, so that's cool. Um, I guess what else was gonna say? This this random buff thing. I think people are going to try to run her on speed, but I think she's not that good on speed because, like, if, if she's on speed, she's going to do AoE more often, right? And the AoE she's going to do is going to be um, really bad because it can be countered, right? So, like, take ML Ken. She's kind of bad into ML Ken because she's going to AoE and then hit him. If you make her fast, she's going to keep hitting him and then keep getting hit back, right? But if you run her on counter set, um, her AOE counters, they can't be countered back. So Violet, she can hit Violet, not not necessarily hit him, hit him, right? You know what I mean? But like, she can hit Violet and he won't counter her back because they're just uh, counter attack AOEs. Um, she can hit Rem without her counter attacking, right? And then she takes a long time to take her turn, right? So that's kind of why I think she'd probably be better on counter set. Uh, people are probably going to run around speed because they want the extra attack on this, which like I said, wasting an entire speed set and all these stats and dumping them into her for a 35% chance for something to happen is kind of a waste of time. Um, and ba putting her on speed set just to get like a, a random buff, just to get effectiveness, which no one cares about. Um, hit a uh, crit chance, which you should be building with 100% crit because that's just dumb not to. Uh, and continuous healing 
is really the only good one because you're going to stack a bunch of health on her. So her continuous healing proc is going to be a big old chunk that she gets. But you're really going to build her on speed set just to get a 33% chance to get that. Just bring a healer that comes with continuous healing on there, right? Like with a continuous healing buff, right? Um, and again, like, like I said, if you ever on counter set, you're you're if you counter a lot, then you're stripping. And then it comes, you know, when it comes her turn, she does this, and this provokes defense buffs and changes their their turn order with the um, with the CR with the combat readiness thing, right? So I, I really do think counter is probably the best way to go with her, but we'll see. You know, maybe maybe the um, the S one like extra proc is going to be that broken, uh, but I think people are going to try to build her on speed and then just kind of be weirdly disappointed with her and then probably switch her over to counter set anyway. Uh, but now that we know the counter says thirty percent, they might just go straight for counter set. You know, who knows? Um, what, was the, what was the last thing I wanted to mention here? Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, that was the other thing. I think she's going to get uh, buffed in some way or something. Uh, they, they might. I feel like they're going to change something. Oh, she's probably going to get nerfed because I, if, if anyone has seen any videos with her in RTA already, uh, I'm not sure if it's intentional, which I think that's why I said it's 50-50 on whether it might get nerfed or not. But decreases the amount of souls acquired by the enemy by 100%. Apparently this works when she's on field and even after she's dead, you still can't get souls. Um, so the point I want to make is that she, that might get nerfed and like, you know, might affect people and they might do something. So I think pulling for her now is, is you really can't lose. You either pull for her and maybe if you're disappointed, um, wow, that was horrible. Uh, you, you might get a refund. I'm not saying you will. So don't, don't take that as like, I'm, I, I said, you got a guaranteed refund. Uh, but I really do think like, I, I don't think she's supposed to work that way. And I think she's going to get. Like, that's going to get nerfed, but if not, then even that's pretty powerful because now you can't get soul burns for the rest of the for the rest of the match. Like, just her being there denied your soul burns 100%, so that's pretty strong. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to run around a counter set, just have her slow and strip people with her S S1 uh, when, then whenever it comes around back to her turn. I might give her some speed, probably. I'm not going to just, like, drop all of her speed, but um, I don't think it's wholly valuable. To like focus on it. Uh, here's Kiwana. I, I have so many Kiwanas. I think I'm just gonna like triple S the fire Kiwana. Um, but I don't know. The only thing I don't want from here is um, auxiliary lots because I already have like way too many copies. Um, yeah, I have like a bunch of aux slots. I think I have I have both aux slots. And, and regular lots, triple S, and then I have an extra ox lots in my box somewhere, just in case like I need two ox lots for some reason. Uh, which I I, I think if for those of you who summoned um, Amelia, I think ox lots is not like a hundred percent like worthless now, but I think Amelia is probably better than ox lots because she has healing on top of like cleansing and on top of the out attack buff. Um, especially like for first turn, like first turn ox lots, you get a hundred percent CR boost, but like how useful is that considering you're not at zero, right? So usually the 50% from Amelia is good enough to just get you to take the first turn anyway. Um, well, you might be at like zero speed relatively, but you're not at zero on the CR bar is what I mean. You don't need that whole 100%. Uh, of course, on later turns, it's probably uh, pretty good because then um, Oxlots kind of you know, shines there because then now you just put them all the way to take their next turn. Uh, but I, I just think uh, Amelia kind of outclasses lots and I, I'm glad I have her now because now I can just like I don't have I don't have a lot of cleave units built, so I can't just 100% cleave everybody. But um, I can certainly try. And we're getting a whole bunch of this guy. I keep forgetting that he's on the rotation. I was like, why, why do I keep getting so many uh, corpses? But he's like, he's right here. So we're gonna get a whole bunch of these four. Um, so even if we don't pull her, we're still reducing the pity, which is a good thing. Um, so whatever comes next, I might have to have a follow up summoning video. Um, if I get enough. And we got so we got the artifact, which is pretty, like I said, it's pretty decent. Um, I do think Durandal is probably gonna get a buff at some point. I, I, you know, I definitely needs one. Um, so we're gonna get one of the other four stars again. We haven't gotten a shoe, which is kind of sad. I, I I don't know. Like it's always funny when you when you're when you're uh, Mystic summoning because it's like I'm not sure what's worse, either pulling the shoe or. Um, or not getting a single shoe, right? Because it's like if you pull the shoe, that means you lost the fifty-fifty. And that's another. That's another example of what I was talking about in the in the Landy summoning video regarding the counter set chance. It's like, is the chance really fifty-fifty to get a Moonlight character or the five-star character? Because we've seen a lot of people who just like 
nonstop pull the regular five star RGB character, right? Um, like you know, it just basically makes you start questioning, you know, whether all your all your statistics are are worth you know anything. Why put stats on anything if it's like, oh, oops, we got it wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, we got a bunch. So look at all this powder. Um, I got. I spent a bunch of. Oh wow, I spent a bunch of powder getting a bunch of Sigurd Scythe copies. Um, so we are down to. I guess we didn't get Bellion. Um, again, like I said, not too bad. Um, well, hopefully we'll get her later. Uh, I might have to make a follow-up video or something by the time. Um, at the at the end of her rotation, I think. Because I still have. Let's see. They're gonna even give us a free unequip weekend, but I'm probably gonna be using that whole time just to farm. Do I have any more? I do not. I'm not gonna buy any of your packs. Uh, how many do I have? I have like four summons. Let's just see if we can get her here. Uh, nope. Not to mention, I mean, I just kind of like Bellion in general. Um, her like, oh, we have like ninety something, right? <laughs> yeah, we have a uh, forty-nine. Um, that's like one. That's like that Guild War I didn't finish. Probably would have given me two. Like, take off two points, give it to here, and then I, you know, two more summons. Um, what else? Did I have anything else? I could summon this, but I kind of, I guess, I just kind of want to save um, gold transmits to Max Imprinter. Um, and I guess that's all we got. So fortunately, we got Landy early, um, but we did not get another. We did not get our our uh, Bellion. We are 50 from Pity, 50... It's 10k, so that's like 2,500 bookmarks. I wonder if I'll... I'm not sure I'll be able to get them in time, but um, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, that's that's it for today. Um, a bit of a rant on why Taga Hells is so powerful right now, um, and why uh, Bellion is pretty strong. Like, even, like I said, it doesn't really matter how you build her, as long as this passive exists, um, you're... She's doing her job, right? So... If you don't find that too valuable, then, you know, you might not pull her at all. But I think most people are going to pull for her just because that passive. Um, this this whole, like, extra attack, 30% only on her own turn is just kind of dumb. It's a, it's a waste of everyone's time. I, I, I don't know. I like it because I think it's going to bait people into building her on speed. And I'm just going to love her on a speed build because uh, she's easily more farmable that way. Because um, speed's hard to get and you're just going to get dumped on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, like I said, uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video. Um... If I get enough bookmarks, like if I only get like, let's see, I still have the Abyss one, so I'll, I might get those at some point. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee just because I hate doing Abyss. Um, but I have, so I have that and I have, um, what else do I have? Yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, you know, Hooch is around, so he's probably going to have a bunch of uh, Mystic Metals in there. So, and then I'll probably do some Skystone refreshes on the shop. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes.